Hey folks, John with Complete Technology Solutions, your friend in less than lethal self-defense. Guys, today we're going to crack open this Mercury Rise TR50 and we're going to do it together. Here we go. Folks, you know, I, we get good launchers in here, and we have a lot of companies now that are throwing their hat into this game, and Mercury Rise has become one of my favorites very quickly. When you see how far these guys have come from the MUB to get to this revolver is an evolutionary leap, and I can't wait to see what they come up with next. But we got to see what it does. If you'll recall, when we tested this, we got these kind of results. There we go. 369. Looks like an error there. 339. Guys, are you seeing where I'm hitting, by the way? We're going to look at it here in just a second. All right, here we go. Error there. 295. 295. Oh, error there. And I think we're out. And guys, that ain't bad, especially for an out-of-the-box self-defense launcher. That is pretty darn solid. But I'm wondering if we can get a little more out of this. So I tell you what we're going to do. I got Stumpy all zoomed in here close for you guys. As you can see, brand new one, never even been taken out of the box. We're going to do this together. When I tell you guys I do it live, I do it live. So I want to be as surprised by this as the rest of you guys. All right, so I'm looking at it to see if we have any excess uh, screws that we have to take off as far as rails or anything else. It doesn't look like it. And, man, those are some monster screws on that thing, guys. That's one thing about the... Um, the TR50, it tends to use those tiny little screws, and sometimes even a micro screwdriver won't fit down, so you have to use a very small head screwdriver to get into there. But these things are a beast. I tell you what, let's go ahead and take out the drum, and we're going to release the pressure on that because I have no idea what we're about to find. And it looks like we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12 screws. I'm going to loosen these up, and we'll be right back with you. All right, guys, so we have all the screws out on this. Listen, before we go any further, I have an apology to make, and this was my bad. And it wasn't an intentional mistake, but I want to make sure I get this clear. Um, our friends at Mercury Rise, they are not a Chinese-based company. They're a Taiwanese-based company. They are in Taiwan. And I made the mistake in the last video of saying that they were Chinese. That was my bad because I had looked at the box and it looked like it was. But they are Taiwanese. And I got to tell you, every interaction I've had with these people has been marvelous, whether it's been a suggestion for an improvement or for getting weapons in here for testing. So once again, Mercury Eyes, sorry about that, guys. I will never make that mistake again. You have my word. Taiwanese. There you go. All right, guys. So we're moving back down here to Stumpy. As you can see, I've got the 12 screws loosened up here. Man, these screws are huge, dude. It's so easy to work with these things. All right, so let's go ahead and let's crack this open. And I hope I got the screws all the way out. Let's make sure. There we go. I'm going to leave these in place, although I bet you they're all the same length. All right, we're going to go real slow around the edges. Let me get a, a little pry bar thing here. Hang on. That way we can kind of do this slowly because i really have no idea what we're about to find guys this may blow up and you guys can all laugh at me then and i missed a screw see always miss a screw there we go all right so we're going down smooth 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 there we go looks like we got one right here so there we go all right yeah i gotta make sure they're all out or they ain't gonna let go that's for sure all right put that one back there and make sure this one's all the way out. And there we go. Okay. So, as you can see, we're looking at the same basic body design as a TR-50. It looks exactly like it here, guys. Um, that is not surprising. And listen, emulation is the highest form of flattery. I do not care if these people are using Umarex's designs and then jumping off to make their own stuff and improvements. That is where innovation comes from. Somebody takes a step, you take the next step. That's what we're looking at here. So let's see what we've got in here. I'm going to go ahead and pull this out. So the barrel spring looks considerably thinner than on the Umrex. There we go. There's the barrel. Exact same design as far as that goes. All right. So just looking in here, as you guys can see, we've got the exact same tensioner to tension the barrel in place. It's run off that barrel spring. And we do have a firing pin. Hopefully you guys can see that down in there. 
And I don't know what size that is. We're going to have to look, nor do I know what thread pattern that is. So we'll have to get to that too. Now, the screws that hold this together, you've got one, two, three, four, five, six. And the valve on the back, guys, that actually looks like it's an Allen key. Hang on, let me see if I can dig up what that is. That's kind of interesting. And we'll see what this does. Okay, yeah, it is a number, looks like a number three. Yeah, number three. That's all I can see on there. So let's open this valve up and take a look at this, guys. I am really curious to see what we're about to find. Golly, that's tight. I may actually have to get something with a little more, a uh, little more torquey. <laughs> all right. There we go. And opening up the valve. And guys, I don't see a valve block in there. Now that, guys, explains to me why this thing is firing as hard as it is right out of the box. Um, there is no blockage between where the CO2 comes up in that cylinder, which you can actually kind of see if you look closely right there is the hole. Hopefully you can see that there. So that hole is all that's regulating that CO2 that's coming up through there. So, but there's no valve block to remove. And the firing pin looks to be about the same as the other firing pin. So guys, this thing is pretty heavily modded right out of the box. That is an aluminum body, by the way. Tell you what, let's go ahead. I'm going to put the valve block back in here and we're going to screw that back in there. It doesn't look like it had any sealant on it. That's kind of interesting. I would probably put a little sealant on there, but we're going to test it without it first and then go from there. But I can tell you guys, it was very, very snug in there. All right, so we got that back in. Okay, so these are definitely hexes. Let's see here. They are... These are very tiny, guys. These are 1.5s. Holy cow. Yeah, those are very, very tiny. I love this aluminum housing, guys, and I'm noticing something else that we'll discuss in a minute that actually uh, gives me very, very high hopes for the upgradability and the modifiability on these on the backside. Now, we're not going to be able to do a lot as far as direct pressure because we have no valve block, but, but there may be something else. Let me get this one open here. And let's see what's inside this. And we're going to take this apart super, super, super slow, just like we did last time, because we do not know what we're going to find. I can tell you by looking at the bottom of this, the way the trigger guard is, the way the trigger is, the way the mechanism works right here, you can see this is exactly like a TR-50. So we want to do this very, very slowly. All right. I am going to grab a small flat tip. We're actually going to do all this with the iFixit kit, guys, which is cool. And we're going to pry around. Oh, guys, that is so easy to... Oh, man, that's easy. That just came right up. Look at that. Okay, let's keep everything in place here, guys. we got to be super careful. And I want to make sure that it all stays in place when I lift this. There. Dude, the valve block literally just almost fell out, guys. Okay. Yeah, that is barely being held in there. All right. I'm going to give you guys a close-up look of the valve here. So we've got the, essentially the exact same spring setup that we're using on the uh, uh, TR-50 with the exception of this spring. Now, if you'll recall, occasionally the spring that holds this advancing mechanism in there um, is wound around and hooked instead of being a direct spring connection like this. I like this design. I do think that's actually a pretty efficient design. And guys, look at the housing. It is all, it looks like chrome steel, which explains also why these things are so durable. Um, there's another thing I'm noticing we'll get to here in a minute. But as far as the advancing spring and the spring over here for the cylinder lock, they are identical springs. So there is not a lot of difference between this and a TR-50, but I think we all sort of suspected that was going to be the case. All right, let me see. You can see how gingerly I'm holding this together, guys. It is really, really, really easy to move things in here. So I'm going to get the case back together. There we go. And hopefully sandwich everything back down where it goes. Hold on a second. There we go. And lock it all into place. At least that's what we're <laughs> that's what we're crossing our fingers for here. Okay. 
There we go. And it did. It sandwiched right back down over there. Let's make sure this is all holding. And all these uh, screws in the sides are the same length, so that's kind of nice to know, too. There we go. And let's get it together at the front, which is going to be that. Advanced, there we go. And here. Each one of these has got a pin, guys, that sets in. So you actually have a pin here that's setting, a pin here that's setting, a pin here that's setting, and here, and one up in the front, which is pretty cool. That's What's really blowing my mind about this is that all these pins exist, and yet the whole thing comes comes apart easily. It, that's the best part about it. You see that? It snapped right into place. And testing it, everything is working normally now. So it's a very, very nice design. All right, let me put this side back on here and get these screws back in. And I want to show you something else I'm noticing that I really wish Umarex would go back to. And I'll show you that here in just a second. But overall... The design build on this, guys, is really, really nice. I am digging it. I'm digging it. Man, I tell you, this company, if these, if these guys continue to upgrade, innovate, and modify things the way they're doing now, they are going to be a serious, serious contender in this market. Okay. There we go. And we're now secured. Let me show you something. On the valve, the CO2 chamber. All right, guys, so making sure everything is still working. Everything is advancing normally. Click, click, click. All right. What are you not seeing? No dimples, which means to me that this could possibly be a threaded CO2 chamber, which Umarex used to do. They actually moved away from that, in fact. And I don't know if that was a cost-cutting thing or what it was or why they did it, but they did move away from that threaded unit for some reason. This is very, very solid. You know what that means? This would be very easy to HPA tap. And, uh, hey, my YouTube family out there, y'all know who I'm talking about. You know you're going to HPA tap one of these, but please keep them safe, guys. We don't need any of these blowing up or anything, but... The way that's built and the heavy construction on all of this, guys, I mean, it's amazing how heavily constructed that is. And the way that block is l tends to lend me to believe that this could be a heck of a modifiable weapon. So um, in the hands of the average modder, there's two things I would do. I don't have the ability to do it. You can actually open up that airflow in there a tiny bit by dremeling it out a little bit, thereby giving a little more air into the CO2 chamber. The more air you have per shot, the harder the shot's going to go down range. Um, the other thing, if you look down in there, and hopefully Stumpy's catching that, you actually have a restrictor in there. Now, on a TR-50 or an HDR-68, if you pull that restrictor out, all your CO2 goes out on the first shot. It's like, and it's gone, just like that. Um, and on this one, I suspect that's probably why that's in there, too, for the exact same reason, so I wouldn't do that. So, all right, well, let's go ahead and let's get her back together and see if it reassembles as easy as it disassembled. So barrel in, and we're going to go ahead and get our lock. We're going to line up our screws here. There we go. And drop it into place. And this is actually, this is something I do like also, guys, this spring that actually holds the, the cylinder in place. Instead of just being the spring that's compressed inside this little dentation here, it's got a plastic insert. See that insert right there? And that insert fits flush against that plastic. I really kind of like how they did that too. So we're going to move the spring back, and let's go ahead and get this into place here. In fact, I'd be willing to bet that if I put that in last, let's see. There we go. Spring back on the barrel. And you want to make sure that spring is back behind this mark right here, and I'm going to bring it up close. That spring needs to be back behind this. If it's not, this barrel will not have the ability to spring in and out like that to put tension on the drum. So, all right, slide this back. Let's go ahead and get this in place. Get our little insert and lock it down. There we go. So we're locked down now, and everything is back in place. Now, what I want to do is let's go ahead and put the top half of the barrel on here. Barrel top half of the launcher there we go and let's make sure that spring stays in place now easy way to tell that guys before you reassemble 
push your two halves together. If you can push this in and it's pressurized, you see how that's bouncing? That's going to be right. If it's not bouncing in and out or if it's locked in place, you need to pull it apart again and check that spring because you've got that spring too far forward. And that is one of the biggest mistakes I see uh, new people when they're pulling the TR50 apart they, or the uh, HDR50 or 68, either one. Um, that's the first thing they always do is that spring is misplaced. Then either the drum doesn't advance, won't load, or just spins. Now, that's your easy way to tell if you've got that wrong. So, all right, putting her back together. Yeah, this, guys, is going to be an easy HPA tap. I mean easy. And I can't wait to see, I cannot wait to see which one of you guys do it. I know somebody out there, and I think I know who it is. You know who you are. Um, is going to get one of these and do that mod. And I am actually anxious to see that too. You won't see me do it. Why? Everybody knows me knows that I am not in the business to make a less lethal lethal. And these things are great out of the box. So, yeah, the truth is uh, I wouldn't hesitate to use one of these as a nightstand gun or a car. You know, keep it in your car. Because they look great, they fire great, those torpedoes are unbelievably accurate. That stabilization is nuts, guys. All right, let's get this one in, and that should be it. God, these large screws are so nice. I got nothing but good things to say so far, guys. I really don't. So, complete teardown. We are back up. Let's see if we can push to fire. And we are good to go. Let's go ahead, and I want to put a CO2 in it just so that I can be certain that I did not miss anything or screw up that seal. So hang on one second. All right. Got to, you know, you would think as many of these videos as I do, guys, I would think to keep a CO2 cartridge here instead of over there, but I never do. All right. Drop that bad boy in there. Let's thread this down. Now we're going to charge it and see if we hear any weird sounds. Here we go. No leaking. Nope. Sounds good. All right, let's give it a shot. We're going to fire in a safe direction over here, guys, but we are not loaded. Once again, no ammo, okay? So we're just going to send some air through it and see what it does. Here we go. Click, 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 click. Now, also one thing I love about this, guys, is this ability to release that pressure. So once again, easy, easy weapon, man. This is a great first design. Guys, this is their first revolver. I don't know about you, but I can't wait to see what they come out with next. If you want a hint, wonderful folks over at Mercury Rise, give us a 68 caliber version of this and maintain that 12 to 18 joule pressure and give us a 68 caliber version of this, and it's going to fly off the shelves because this is great. But, hey, guys, thank you so much for watching. Um, the video that is coming this week, the next video should drop, might drop 4th of July, actually. Um, I'm doing the HDB. I, this is long overdue, and I was doing a mod for a customer today. Hi, it's going out tomorrow for you. Um, on the HDB, you will not believe how easy the mod is, and I'm not even joking. I am not even joking how simple. And that new tool that I told you about that had the hole drilled through it, you're going to see why I made that. And when you do, you're going to want one. We'll see you all soon. If I don't talk to you before the 4th, have a great and safe 4th. Bye-bye.